All right, so in this video, we're gonna be going over how to set up your first system Verilog file using a simple full adder circuit that we use from Lab One. And we're also going to go over how to create the test bench and how to use model sim to view the output waveforms of that test bench that we've created. So first we can go ahead and look at our module for the full adder that we used in Lab One. This is the one I created. I have my three input bits, Q0, Q1, and Q2, and output uh, values of sum and carry, S and C. And we have our previously determined output equations here. Uh, and so the changes that we're going to make to turn that into a system Verilog file are not extensive. Basically, the only things that we have to change are we have to add the word logic in two spots here. Uh, because that's how system Verilog works. But the next thing we have to do is we have to add our test bench module to test our full adder system Verilog file using model sim. And so we're going to create a new module. It's going to be called full adder SV test bench. That's just what I chose to call it. Uh, there's no inputs or outputs for this test bench module because all of it's being done internal for the simulation. But we do have to define the logic that we're going to be inputting into the actual full adder module. And so we're going to have logic Q2, Q1, Q0, and logic S and C for sum and carry. And you don't actually have to split those up, but I did just so it's easier to visually to see the inputs and the outputs there. Then what we need to do is we need to instantiate our full adder SV module, and I'm going to go ahead and call that test. And we're going to input Q0, Q1, and Q2 into the module, as well as get out the sum and the carry values that are coming from our module up here. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually tell the test bench what values to input and when. So we're going to use an initial block here, and we're going to begin it. And then I just basically arranged this section here like a truth table so we can iterate through all of the possible input values for Q1, Q0, and Q2. And this 10 over here is just telling it to wait 10 time units in between each change of those input values. And then we're going to go ahead and just end the initial block. And we're going to end the test module. So the next thing we need in order to run the model sim is all of the files. And so what you can do is you can go to Canvas and download the simulations.zip file that she has on there in the Verilog section. And I used the demo from the adding machine folder in here. And so you're going to need three files. You're going to need the wave.do file, the simulate.do file, and the launch model sim.bat file. And I went ahead and copied those into my full adder SV project folder here. But we're going to need to make some changes to all of those. So the first one we're going to have to change is the launch model sim.bat file. And the changes to this one are pretty easy. All we have to change is the initial directory here, because it's not Altera anymore. It's Intel FPGA Lite. And we're going to have to change the version number from 16.1. In my case, I'm using 17.0. The rest of that can all remain the same. The next file we have to change is the simulate.do file. And in this one, we have to change a few things. So first, you have to specify which uh, Verilog or system Verilog file you're using. And so in this one's case, it was using adding machine.v, but we're going to be using full adder sv.sv as our system Verilog file for the project. The next thing you have to specify to uh, model sim is what the name of the test bench module is. And that goes down here. So in my case, I called it full adder sv test bench. So you just put that there. And the rest of that file can remain the same. The last file you have to adjust is the wave.do file, which is the file that basically sets up the windows and all of the stuff in model sim. And so you want to tell it which signals we want to display on our output. And in their case, they had two signals they were displaying. They were displaying a hex value and a segments value. And they used this expand input to tell it to expand the segments because it was a, a vector. Uh, but in our case, we don't have to do that. So we're going to display uh, all of our inputs, Q0, Q1, and Q2. And then we're also going to display the output, sum, and carry. And so that's all you have to change to make the wave.do file work properly. So then you'll double click on your launch model sim.bat file, and it'll bring up model sim, and it'll look like this. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to type do simulate.do, and that'll run our simulation. And so what that's going to do is it's going to bring up this window, and it will have the whole waveform over here, stepping through every 10 picoseconds, which is what we specified 
in our file here. Every 10 picoseconds, it's going to flip the inputs up here. You can see Q0, Q1, and Q2. And it will show us the result on the output. And so if you, you can go through and view what the inputs and the outputs were. And if you move this little yellow bar, it'll show you what the values are over here. Uh, though in this rather simple example, uh, it's trivial to see what the values would be. Uh, and you can see that our circuit works as expected whenever we only have, when we have an odd number of input bits asserted, our sum bit is lit up. And when two or three of the input bits are asserted, our carry bit is also asserted. And that's how we get model sim working for this simple example. So then the last thing we need to do to get this project complete is we're gonna need to program our board. So we're gonna go ahead and come in here and we're gonna open up the program device. And I had some trouble with this portion during the first lab. Uh, what I got to work was basically to use the auto detect option. And it will bring up a little menu and you'll select 5CSEMA5 as your choice. And then you'll, what you'll need to do is you'll right click on the correct device and you'll add the file and you'll go ahead and you'll add your .sof file here. And then all you have to do is hit start and I'll go ahead and program your board. And then you can look at your desk and see that your sum circuit is working properly.